the Joe Rogan experience. And, and I, have, I have a question for you, though. Like, okay. what do you, because, like, you know, you do talk a lot about, like, woke stuff kind of going amok, right? Mm-hmm. Does it not bother you, though, about Bernie, that he aligns himself with some characters who are super woke? I think and, he, and woke activists in particular. Yeah. Well, I mean, he also aligns himself with people like Cornell West, who is brilliant and has some amazing ideas about that and, and like looks at it from a, a an accurate and educated perspective. Mm. I think a lot of the, the wokeness is a sign of a cultural shift in the right direction. Less racism, less homophobia, less fill in the blank. All those all the yeah. things that we tr- that trouble us about like evil behavior and even greed corporate greed all these these things that trouble us about the influence that money has on politics and bernie clearly stands against all that stuff and i think that when you see these the, this woke stuff even though it goes amok you have to look at it on a spectrum it's like the crazy antifa people who demand 100 percent compliance with woke ideology or they'll hit you in the head with a bike lock versus <laughs> People who want single mothers to be able to have free education and free health care and give them the economic support that they have to raise their family and hopefully give their children a chance at achieving a successful, comfortable life in this world versus suppress them versus keep them in this fucked up system that just throws them in the meat grinder with everybody else. Treat this country like a community. Like, try to do our best to help the people that are in a disenfranchised position because there's so many. Try to do our best to, uh, in some way, economically uplift all these deeply impoverished sections of our country. That's those are the good aspects of woke ideology. See, all woke ideology isn't just the you need seventy eight different gender pronouns and you have to comply with. That's actually fringe, probably. It is fringe. But it's also fringe right – I mean like it's, there's nothing wrong with being conservative fiscally. There's nothing bra- wrong with being conservative in the way you dress or the way you behave. You know, It's like when you go far right, then things get ugly, right? And it's, it's – the outside edges on both parties are the mess. Most people, reasonable people, if they could have conversations with folks – even if they had disagreed on certain things, they'd find themselves somewhere in uh, a, a comfortable, uh, a comfortable discussion where you could at least sort through the ideas and try to figure out why you think the way you think and why I think the way I think, why how we disagree, and are you right or am I am I wrong? Like I want to know, you know. And and most people don't. These kind of conversations, like trying to figure out if the person who opposes your philosophy or your perspective is right and you're wrong, it's very uncomfortable for people. Right. So what do they do? They just fucking shit on anybody who's on the other side. And they don't talk to them. And there's very little exchange of ideas in between the right and the left. One of the guys I really like talking to is Dan Crenshaw. Who's a right wing guy? Like he's very reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Very reasonable. He's so much respect for doing that thing on SNL too. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. that was great. It I mean, was that, great. that was such a, a nice meal culpa, like to see. Yes, we we it, and and it's so rare nowadays. Like this, you know, dividing line between right and left, and, and things yes. are just so so hyper hyper polarized. So yeah, I mean, you can't like guys will go on a Fox News show. And people scream at them, you know, why, how dare you use that? Like Jimmy Dore just did Tucker Carlson's show and people were just shitting on him all over the place for doing that and using his platform. And Of course he's using his platform. He's getting good ideas out there. Who, Tucker? Jimmy Dore. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Dore Jimmy Dore yeah. has an amazing YouTube I, I've show. I've seen him. It's fucking yeah. amazing. And the way he breaks down things. It's hilarious, but also he's funny. accurate. And, and from the far left – too, which yes. I mean, I, I disagree with him a, a lot politically, but like he's he actually entertains me. So. Yes, he's a, um, an angry far left guy who's funny, and he laughs like was it Mutsy the that guy the dog that has the asthma laugh? Oh, you he gets, he's got a crazy laugh. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I, I like people with crazy laughs because their, their laugh just makes me laugh. So I just yeah. watch for that purpose alone. We need more discussions. You know, we need more people that. And and the thing is, if you like. Uh, people have gotten mad at me for having people on the podcast that are far right people, particularly in the far past, like many years ago. 
And one of the things that's hilarious is when they said uh, his show has had this person, that person, this person, that person, all the all the negatives. Yeah. And you're talking about fifteen hundred plus episodes. And you'll you'll list like five or six in a row as if that defines the right. show. But like I said, this is the uh, an, an, another example of the political one drop rule. Like yes. you in, interview like one far right person, so you mm-hmm. the whole ignore Jimmy Dore, ignore that you have had Abby Martin, Edward Snowden, and all these people on. Like you've done this far right person, your whole show is far right. Therefore, Rogan is a you know is is an alt right person. Well, it's easy too because I look like one. Like I look like I should be an alt right person. No, you don't. Uh, yes, I do. Why? Because you work out. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, a bald cage fighting commentator. You know that. You know what? That that's a terrible. I, I don't know why this correlation has really started to exist, but but it has. I saw I saw an article. I think it was on the Guardian that said something like, "If you exercise too much, you're." Um, there was an article about that. Like exercise is kind of like a. Mask, like again, they're lumping Toxic all these concepts. Yeah, they're lumping all these concepts together. Uh, I bet that article was written by a weak bitch. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's, Just yeah, feeding it's, the fire. Sorry. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's silly. There's a lot of like really brilliant people who exercise all the time. Right. They just enjoy it. They yeah. enjoy having a body that works really well. There's a lot of brilliant people that like racing cars too. Right. They're, you know, they just enjoy the mechanical aspect of racing a car. It's kind of the same thing. When you, you do something to your body to juice your body up to make it stronger and faster and work better, it doesn't mean you're dumb. Yeah, but this stuff – It doesn't stuff, mean you're toxic masculine. But this stuff is insidious because it's bad enough to be in political silos. We're now in cultural silos and they're mapping on each other, right? Yeah. So one, one of the things that happened when I first moved here was that, um, you know, so – I because I didn't grow up here. I, I wasn't – I, I didn't know what I shouldn't like. So people uh, would say like, oh, you, you're Boston, like, you know, educated, liberal, coastal elite, right? But then I was like, I love WWE. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> so they're like, that's not, of all people, like, you know, I'm surprised you watch WWE. And, I, you know, this was the time of like Hardy Boys and Lita. I grew up with that stuff. So people would be surprised and, and they would push back on it. And it's – it's it's increasingly become that way. Like from a person's consumption habits, what they like, yeah. um, hobbies, you're now able to map what what politics they will have or likely to have, and right. that's, that's dangerous. Like we we shouldn't it be is. we shouldn't be going down this route. It's been very comforting for me to see how many left wing, intelligent, well read, educated people actually enjoy watching the UFC. So I've talked to so many of them, like, you're a fan. Like, oh, all right. right." right. And then they want to have these conversations with me about fights and about this matchup and that matchup. I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. Like people that you would never have associated with being like a fan, like Robert Downey Jr., UFC fan. And we're talking to him about like, wow, Matt Damon, UFC fan. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. Anybody breaking moles really should be elevated. You know, like because it's so rare, we just yes. get more and more entrenched in, in these clusters. Right, and people are scared to like things like WWE or, or like anything they like. You know, some some people love fucking mosh pits. Yeah, they're like, you, you know? know, it's fake. Right? I'm like, of course, yes, but it's entertaining. <laughs> did you not see what Vince McMahon did? Like, it's just entertaining. <laughs>